It's my former TV wife. It's none other than the brilliant Alex Phillips. Hello, Alex. All right, old hubby. What <laughs> amicable di divorce we've had. We still choose to hang out together all the time rather yeah, than yeah. fight over yeah, things. Yeah, exactly right. It's really good to have you on the show. You almost came in, didn't you? But not quite. But uh, Yeah, good... no. I've been doing all sorts of bits and bobs. Oh, I know what you've been doing. You're watching, you're watching daytime there. telly. How was the chase yeah. today? Oh, do you know, I'm, I haven't put the telly on. I've been really busy. I know. Yeah. Yeah. What time are you coming in? And I suddenly thought, oh, gosh, I've kind of run down the clock a bit. That's so. all right. That's OK. Uh, <laughs> I say, so I say to you, what what was the chase like? You don't even know what the chase is. Alex, I, I know what it is. I've never watched it, but I had an app on my old phone, which was the quiz, because I just quite like answering quiz questions. But I've never watched the actual show. No, no. <laughs> Alex doesn't know anything about television, folks, which is what I love about her. Who cares about television? Right, uh, let's get going. And I thought we'd kick off on this. As I said in my monologue, uh, Alex, if you want to tell the big story, in any circumstance, tell the small stories. They tend to point to the big picture. And nothing points to the big picture more than this story. Uh, convicted Albanian burglar Dorian Puka, who's 28 years old, uh, has twice been jailed for burglary in this country and twice been deported. His first offence was way back in 2016. Uh, also twice, he has broken back into this country. He is now uh, on his third sort of illegal visit to this country, if you like. Uh, he is allowed to stay for as long as he likes, uh, effectively, because he's applied for asylum. Uh, and he's enjoying himself. He's filmed himself. He's put footage of himself, 90-second video on uh, TikTok and Instagram, driving his shiny new red Ferrari, £300,000 it cost. Recently, this guy, look at him, it's unbelievable, isn't it? Recently, this guy went on holiday, you'll remember this, Alex, uh, to a very flash hotel in uh, Cornwall called the Cabis Bay Hotel. That's where they had the uh, 2021 G7 summit, if you remember, Biden and all that there. Uh, and uh, he filmed himself uh, skipping down the beach while wearing his electronic tag. He's officially on something called immigration bail. So this guy, twice in jail, twice broke back into the country, uh, has broken all the laws in the land, and uh, he is allowed to stay uh, because the European Convention on Human Rights say that he must not be kicked out while his application is being processed. This is just insanity, isn't it? It's mental. So first of all, how's he broken back into the country? How's he actually gotten into the United Kingdom? Because you would think when you get to passport control, which you have to do if you're coming from Albania into the UK, the alarms would go off and it'd be like, dee, dee, dee. Yeah. oh, well, this guy, he's a wrong one. He's a crook. He's been in prison before. He's been deported twice. He's on the blacklist. He's not allowed in. So I want to know how he got into the country in the first place, because that shows a deeply dangerous, porous border. If any old crook and criminal can come in at their whim mm. uh, for, uh, yeah, what asylum from what kev yeah. what asylum from what what war in albania what situation in albania the only thing i can imagine is he wants to protect all his ill-gotten gains he's a career criminal he doesn't look to me like he's likely to be some sort of i don't know nuclear science or world leading neurosurgeon to have earned all that cash money no. so clearly what he wants to do is continue his criminal activities over here and if you look at the organized crime index this is website that i bang on about because it, it is absolutely amazing uh -huh. if you look up organized crime index on google it comes up there's a heat map you can zoom into the country and it details all of the organized crime in every country in the world and uh, in the uk the vast majority of all the illicit industries and pursuits in the united kingdom have now been consolidated by guess what albanian gangs yeah yeah so, you know you really have to work hard or stretch your imagination too far to assume that oh he's been in prison twice okay he seems to have a fleet of luxury vehicles yeah. <laughs> you know he doesn't seem to take much notice of the law mm, i wonder what sort of a uh, career he's got Yes, uh, I'm sure it's extremely upstanding. Uh, he's also filmed himself in a Porsche, two Mercedes, a Bentley and a BMW. Uh, now, this, of course, follows yesterday's outrageous story uh, of another uh, Albanian jailbird, a guy who also uh, broke our laws, went to prison and then uh, was deported, sneaked back into the country. Now, this guy, a little bit cleverer than our friend uh, Dorian Puka, he took the precaution of marrying 
his uh, Lithuanian girlfriend when he came back and they had a baby and uh, when he applied for asylum he was allowed to stay because the European Court of Human Rights said he has a right to a family life. I agree with that, but why, given that he's a serial lawbreaker, has twice broken into our country, has done time in jail, why is he allowed to have a family life here? You can go have a family life in Lithuania, can't you? You can go have a family life in Albania, can't you? I mean, this is utterly ridiculous. And the thing that I find most infuriating is Albania is a country that we're supposed to now have a deportation agreement with. They were, at one point, the biggest cohort of people coming over on the small boats. Why? Because they're the ones who largely run a lot of people trafficking. They're the ones who are operating the hand car washes, you know, running the drugs industries. Like I said, a lot of the violence on our streets, whether it's credit card crime, thefts, all the rest of it, is consolidated by Albanian gangs now. Mm. And so we actually set up a returns agreement with Albania. I mean, for crying out loud, Keir Starmer suddenly realising mm. that Georgia Maloney isn't right-wing, you know, a mental neo-fascist lunatic, but very popular, flew over to bask in her glory and said to her, oh, so you've got a plan to, uh, I don't know, have a, an agreement with Albania yeah. Yeah. to send your illegal migrants there. I mean, what, we're going to sign up to that all the while having this sort of yeah. flow of illegal Albanian migrants here who run all of our crimes. Yeah. I, I mean, it just, it's I, ridiculous. I think, uh, Alex, you've uh, fundamentally misunderstood the nature of our returns deal with Albania. What it is, is we deport Albanian criminals to Albania and then they return illegally to Britain. I think that's what the deal is. I mean, it, it, it's just ridiculous. By the way, I'll tell you a little story. You know, everybody thinks, oh, how did they get, how did this guy get back into this country? How do they get back? Talking about two Albanians who've done it serial times. Uh, and everybody's, oh, I must come on a small boat. There are so many ways you can sneak into this country. Now, uh, some years ago, when I was a little younger than this, you know, when I was in my 50s or something, no, no it was when I was a young younger-ish guy, yeah, in my 40s, I, I went with a bunch of friends to uh, Boulogne for the day. It was a guy's stag do, right? Uh, while we were in Boulogne, uh, you know, uh, I think I might have had a couple of drinks, you know, uh, I, I lost my passport. I didn't, so I, I, you know, so I thought, how am I going to get back into the country? I, can't, I really can't be bothered to talk to immigration officers. So when the ferry docked, uh, if you're enterprising and you look around, it's pretty easy to break, to climb fences and get out of docks. Uh, so that's what I did. Uh, I climbed a couple of fences and when my mates all came through passport control, I was waiting on the other side. <laughs> so so if, you're, if you're determined enough, you know, there are so many ways you can get into this country. By the way, uh, the, uh, our... Um, uh, our uh, uh, Ferrari friend, when he first broke in, he came in under a lorry. You know, re remember that. So I feel almost uh, nostalgic, oh, nostalgic about that. nostalgic. The good old days <laughs> the of the good life. good old days, yeah. You know, I had an amazing call the other day on my show. We are talking about, um, you know, subjects along this line. And uh, a guy called up, Colin, he's a trucker, right? And he was driving his truck, his refriger refrigerated truck through France. And he called up the producers and said, I really want to speak to Alex about this subject. In the period of time that he's waiting for them to call back and said, right, she's doing calls now. He had gone round to the back of his refrigerated truck, opened it, and a load of migrants with knives had popped out. You see, we've got to remember this. You know, we're, we're, everybody thinks that the whole nature of our uh, immigration crisis or our migrant crisis, if you like, is these people coming across in the boats, and that is a bad thing, and it must be stopped. Uh, but uh, there are so many other ways that people break into this. I hear this something country. really scary, like really terrifying. Yeah. So. Osama bin Laden's son, Hamza bin Laden, is uh, apparently is, uh, crept up out of the shadows and he is now running Al-Qaeda 2.0. Hurrah! You know, can't we look forward to that all kicking off again? Yeah. And one of the things that they are doing is they have these mass sort of factories producing fake documents by the bucket load to try and get their terrorists into the West. Right. Well, there you go. And today, uh, we're going to be covering it uh, later in the show after you've left us, but uh, we might as well talk about it now that Britain's spy chief says that uh, Russia and Iran in particular are uh, plotting or already are destabilising us uh, through the medium of criminality. So they're encouraging this sort of thing. They're encouraging these Albanians to come back. As you say, they're giving them free, you know, you know if you're in Albania or any other country and you want to get into this country, uh, the Russians and the Iranians will get the documents that you need, the fake documents. 
I've been saying this for years, Kev. I've been saying this for years, that for the enemies of the West, all of this migratory flow is there to destabilise us. It's an act of grey zone warfare. We have seen Russia bussing migrants to the border of Belarus and Poland, rattling the fence, creating makeshift weapons to go after their border forces. I mean, thankfully, the police in Poland don't really, you know, bide their time. They've got guns and they're like, you get back away from that fence. But we know that actually it's Wagner mercenaries in Africa who are pocketing a load of money actually running the migratory flows. It's Hezbollah. It's Hamas. This is how terrorist organisations make their money. Once upon a time, it was the drugs trade, opium, heroin, all of that sort of stuff. Yeah. Now, as well as that, it's the people trafficking, which is now bigger internationally than the drugs trade. Mm. And if Keir Starmer going, we're going to smash the gangs. Oh, what? You're going to go over to Wagner and go, excuse me, Britain mm. doesn't like what you're yeah. up to. What we need is the Prime Minister to stand behind a lectern and say, all of these people coming over in the boats are breaking into the country. We know that there are going to be known terrorists among them. We know that this is a fueling and funding terrorist organisations. We know that this is being used by our enemies to destabilise us. And that might shut up the NGOs like Care for Cali waving their placards going, everyone's a refugee when they're not. Oh, of course they're not. Of course they're not. I mean, what is it? 80% of them are young uh, economically active males under the age of 34 so we know why they're coming they're not escaping war and torture last time I were looked there's no war and torture in France there's not a whole lot of it in Albania I get so all this money from. if they're like so poor and they're economic migrants they just want a chance like where did you get hold of I don't know one two five ten thousand pounds yeah. most British people don't have ten grand lurking around in their bank that they can just gamble you know on trying to get into a country illegally these aren't the poorest in the country. I'll tell you what, if you've got 10 grand and you live in sub-Saharan Africa, yeah. you're living it large. Yeah. You're not the poorest. Yeah, well, old, old Dorian Puka with his £300,000 Ferrari, he doesn't seem to be struggling too much. I wonder what he gets up to in his spare time. I mean, I wouldn't suggest that uh, lots of Albanians are professional burglars and more to the point, professional drug dealers. That would be a terrible slur on that nature, nation, except that they are. <laughs> no, right, exactly. You know, amazingly, The Telegraph has been doing all this digging lately and come up with all of these crime statistics by nationality, which our government never publishes. Won't do it, it, will they? No. And they've actually printed all this stuff over the last few days. And foreign nationals are twice as likely to commit a crime than someone born in the UK. And when you look at specific nationalities, there are trends here. Yeah. We need information so we can identify the trends. That dear Sir Kia, is how you smash the gangs by actually figuring out that they exist. Yeah, yeah you've got to do that, but uh, smashing the gangs is oh, great to do it. Uh, however, you can smash as many gangs as you like. If you don't stop the migrants, there will be new gangs. So the whole premise of Calamity Cooper and Free Gear Kia's uh, method of tackling the migrant crisis is false it's just ridiculous and everybody knows it when they hired this guy martin hewitt former copper to head up her yvette's cherished border security command the first thing he said on day one by the way he's getting 200 grand a year the first thing he said on day one is smashing the gangs won't solve the migrant crisis so yeah that, but the point about keir starmer we have to go to break now alex but uh, the point about keir starmer you talked about him going over to see uh, georgia Mal maloney the Italian leader the other week and going, oh, I like what she's done about her migrant crisis. She's got a long way to solving her crisis. My big question is, what is the difference between Giorgio Maloney and Keir Starmer? It is this. Giorgio Maloney wants to stop, solve her migrant crisis. She wants right. to stop them coming. Keir Starmer does not. And it's you know what she was doing? That. She was, she was stopping the boats. Yeah, I know, very, I know. She made all the NGOs picking them up in the middle of the Mediterranean illegal. They weren't allowed to pick people up and drop them off at Italian ports. She essentially stopped the boats, as did Greece. Mm -hmm. Greece has done this. Greece, in, I think, 2015 had seven, no, 850,000 migrants tried to come illegally into Greece in one year alone in 2015. In 2022, it was down to 12,500. Why? They stopped the boats. It yeah. can be done, folks.